Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jason, also known as Oxfoot. I've not really done a rig walk around on my channel before, but I wanted to go ahead and do that because a lot of people ask me questions and I will be making some changes soon. So I wanted to go ahead and give you guys kind of what is on this build, what I've done, and maybe a little bit of what I will change in the future. So let's go ahead and start up here on the front. All right, so this is the C4 low profile bumper. This is a pretty common bumper. A lot of people are running this. Um, I've been pretty happy with it so far. The paint didn't do so well, but that has nothing to do with C4. That's more of a, um, just go into a cheap powder coat shop. Then I stripped the lining on it and I did um, a truck bed liner, but it's not sticking too well. So I'm gonna have to just go ahead and strip it and repaint it. I've got these uh, shackles here that I run full time. I know a lot of people will take them off and just leave them stored in there, but I just leave them on because I wanna keep space. As far as a light bar, I have, I think this is an extreme LED. I will possibly be switching to another company pretty soon uh, for this one, but for right now, this works perfectly fine. I think this cutout was made for a Baja design, but uh, I didn't wanna spend that kind of money. I also have the Smitty Built X2O, I believe it's called. Smitty Built makes a lot of products that are pretty cheap and work pretty great. This one has been great for me for like, I believe the last two years. And it's been perfectly fine. And I think it was about half what a Warren winch costs. I'll link below the Smitty Belt. You can do some research on it yourself. And I believe that's everything that's up here. I will pop the uh, hood real quick. So if you come up here, I just did this uh, two days ago. I used to have a Smitty Belt compressor in here, but I just went out and bought the Maxi Track, which is, this is from Napa. And it's supposedly, according to them, faster than the ARB Twin, which is a $700 uh, compressor and I really like it because I can keep the hose inside of there pull it out use my uh, quad flate my uh, quick flate and uh, air up just straight in from here I haven't wired everything up yet just because I just did this but yeah so far I really like the way this works it's a little bit bigger than my smitty built so I had to tilt it a little bit and uh, this rubber isn't holding up so great. It's kind of flaking, so I'll have something new there. This tray right here is a C4 tray. This is actually made to go for a dual battery setup, so you can have a battery here and your main battery, but I think it works perfectly fine for a compressor, so if you wanna have onboard air for, yeah, $114 plus, I think $100 for this holder right here, and then you don't have to spend $700 on a compressor, and according to them, this is even faster than that compressor. All right, so up here I have these Baja Sports. I really have nothing to complain about. I'm gonna switch because I think I'm gonna end up going with diode here, diode down on the bottom, and possibly diode for my uh, light bar down here. Um, but other than that, these are perfectly fine. They work really well, but they're pretty expensive. I think these were $200. Whereas like if you go with something else, I think you'd be perfectly happy. I had Nylites before this and they were I think $20. So I think these are Cali raised. I'll have to confirm that when I check it, but I, I believe these are Cali raised brackets and I like these a lot. All right, so one thing I did want to talk about is that these are the factory housing here and they are really not doing so well. They're fogging up, they're chipping, they're just, pretty awful i don't know what's going on here so soon i will be replacing these or i will be wet sanding these to clean them up um, not really sure but possibly have a video on that i'd rather go with the new housing because these have been wet sanded before and they're still doing this so i may end up going with an aftermarket i have a video on this already but i have these uh bosla or bosla headlights i'm not really sure how to pronounce it these are really great they're tri-color so you flip the switch and they go from white to kind of a medium to a yellow and it's really great if you're in regular weather you can just go with the white one if it's really inclement weather outside then you can go yellow i have the same for the fog lights i'll probably be going with the diode version of this in this pocket because it's actually um, a really nice look and I'd rather just run full-time amber down there. 
All right, so I have these KO2s here. These are 285, 70, 17. A lot of people call them 33s, but they're not a true 33 for width. These are pretty good standard size for a three inch lift or a 2.5 inch lift. I like these tires. I may end up going with new ones uh, pretty soon and I may end up going with this same one because the tread's getting pretty low and we're about to go into winter pretty soon. So I definitely need new tires. These have lasted me two years with heavy off-roading, so I've been pretty happy with them. I may end up trying another brand, but I'm not really exactly sure. The size that I'm looking at is gonna be larger than this. I would probably go with either a 295, a 305, 315, or a 35 on here. I've set myself up to be able to run 35s, so other than cutting up front, I should be good to go if I need to possibly some trimming right here. I think I might go that route, but 295 is probably where I'll end up. Um, I'm also running the Stealth Custom Series Ray 10. These are 17 by nine width. So they're two inches wider than, than factory and they have a negative 38 offset. So the, the lip right here is really deep, which is great for if I need to, in the back, if I need to climb on top of the vehicle, I can just use it as a step. But also, aesthetically, I think the, um, the deep lip is kind of a nice look. All right, so one thing I'm thinking about possibly doing is along with the C4 bumper up there, they have these high clearance additions, which would stop any really rubbing up here because I do get rubbing at full tilt. That is due to the wider wheel, but um, even when I didn't have the wider wheel, I got a little bit of rub as well. So I may be doing that high clearance addition. So it'll basically make it a full bumper. Inside I have the SPC upper control arms. So these are probably the best upper control arms you can get for articulation. You can move the wheel forward or back depending on where you need to put the tire. I just have pretty wide wheels. So I'm just gonna get rubbing really no matter what, unless I cut a little bit up here, you can just put some heat in there and push it up forward. I just haven't had the time to do that. I'm normally running an Icon coilover, but I had the Heim joints blow out on them and Toy Tech was kind enough to let me have a pro lift with a spacer in the meantime. So it does not ride nearly as good as my Icon did, but it's nowhere near as noisy as my Icon with the uh, busted Heim joint was. All right, so down here, I do have a body mount shop that is by RSG. They are a company that makes sliders and they also do you know, just some general work. I am running the RSG slider. This is the RSG slider with the no angle. If I was gonna go again, I would do an angled slider with the kick out, but I have no kick out on there. Um, this is just what I went with. And I think if I went again, I would do the angled with the kick out. But the body mount chop and the sliders, I've been really happy with. RSG did those, and RSG also did my Bilsteins in the rear. I used to have a complete Icon lift, but I just switched to the Bilsteins to try something different out other than the Icons. Um, but yeah, I think, like I said, I was very happy with what they did. All right, so let's go ahead and move to the back and we'll talk about this ladder. Now, I have a ladder because I have a rooftop tent that opens up in the back. If you don't have that and you don't really need to, need to get on the roof, um, I don't really see a need for a ladder. So if you think that you want to go with one, go for it. But I personally just don't think it's necessary. I guess this was like an earlier one and they've switched up a lot of stuff recently from people I've talked to. It works fine for what we need it for. There's some companies out there that do basically the same thing. So I'm not recommending or not recommending the C4 ladder, this is just what I have. So I actually normally have a trash caddy here, but I just forgot it this time. So normally it would just sit on this section right here. I talked about that in my Napa video because I did pick this up from Napa. It is called the Maxitrack Trash Caddy and I really like it. So far, no fading like a lot of the other brands do, but I'll have to really judge that in the future. So um, this is just some shackle that I got online. I like to run this full time because I don't tow. So this is a really good recovery point and you never really know when you're gonna need a recovery. So I just leave this on full time. 
occasion I'll take it out and clean it just to make sure it doesn't get locked up. I'll link this below, but it's just some Amazon shackle, but it works really well. All right, so let's go ahead and walk inside and we'll, I'll show you guys some stuff that's pretty new. All right, so this is the peak to peak drawer system. It is their two drawer system. This was not only a prototype, it was actually one of the owner's first drawers. So if you're looking at this, um, this is not gonna be what you get for a final product. What they have now is uh, light years ahead of what this is. It still functions in the same way and I really like it. So I can only imagine the new ones are just even better. But basically in here, I just keep, um, you know, some recovery stuff in here, just clothes in here. Um, this is a bottle of whiskey, some lights. I've talked about this in previous videos, but I really like these. They are magnetic. Where's a magnet? On the side of the vehicle. And there's three of them, of these little things that pop off. These are really great. Um, I basically got all of my food stuff in here, uh, a multi-tool. Some of these little hydration things. Um, I'm not saying that you need to get this brand, but I always keep these with me just in case I wake up dehydrated or hungover or something like these. They really work great. Again, yeah, just some kitchen stuff. I've got food and stuff in here. Some just snacks, you know, just in case. I've got my Eno hammock. I've had this since 2010 and it still holds up just fine. Uh, this used to be my primary camping before I got the rooftop tent. Just some extra stuff in here. Uh, always keep gloves. And uh, also something that I don't want to show on YouTube because I don't want to get demonetized. So this drawer on this side is a larger drawer in width. Um, I just keep mostly like stuff that I need to grab. Um, for camping, this has got my fire extinguisher, which I would always recommend getting a fire extinguisher, especially if you're gonna be having fires. But yeah, this one works really great. This is first alert. It's a kitchen one, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. I had an old one that would, sometimes the pin would come out. And I didn't really like it, but um, this one I like a lot. I keep oatmeal's in here. Um, you can just keep like general MREs. This is kind of just for emergencies, but uh, you can cook these without cooking them. You just put water in them and they heat themselves. Um, I have a video a long time ago that I did on these, but I always try to keep these in there. I'll link some on Amazon below. Um, again, more magnetic lights. That's not magnets. You can just set them. I always keep this in here. This is like a uh, cutting board, but also a colander because it's got this little thing at the bottom but yeah it can be a colander or I think they call it a camp sink so you can kind of wash things in here like vegetables and stuff but it's great because it's also a cutting board and uh, when it comes to kind of keeping things organized I like things that do more than one thing so that I can bring a cutting board and the sink so I don't have to bring a sink and a cutting board I've also got emergency uh, blankets in here this is great because we do a lot of winter camping and you know sometimes it's colder than you thought it was gonna be so the emergency blanket is a really nice thing to have again more you know hammocks in here we've got the Stanley thing this kind of just lives in here so basically it's just got some bowls and some and a lid to keep dirt out of it um, but yeah, I really like these. This is a good one to have and it's 20 bucks at Walmart. I might even have them on Amazon. So I'll link that below either Amazon or the Walmart link. Propane bottles, I always keep those on there because I run a lot of propane stuff. I normally run a buddy here during the winter. So this is really nice. Although I did just switch to a diesel heater and I'll have a video on that pretty soon. When it comes to the buddy heaters, I always keep these in there just in case. Um, it basically, it's gonna go off now. So that loud sound, so that loud sound will go off if you have any carbon monoxide from the propane. I've never had that happen before and I've not really heard of that happening to anybody. Just in case, I would carry this and also just in case that's why I am switching to a diesel heater. The last thing I have in here is this uh, saw. 
This was just on Amazon. It's kind of similar to some of the really expensive brands, but this was only 20 bucks and it's good for cutting down limbs, especially if you need to get your car through or you need to open up your rooftop tent or something like that. And then I just always keep this in here. Although I may end up getting like a shop one just to keep it a little bit more, you know, tight. So I'm also running now the Set Power uh, RV45D. So this is on a fridge slide. I would not recommend this fridge slide. It is, it sounds like this off-roading. So I actually reached out to Phil at uh, Peak to Peak and they have a company they work with. I will have that um, by the time this video is edited. So if I get some B-roll, I'll show you guys that one. I don't know who makes this, but this was just something on Amazon. Now the set power fridge is really great. I have a video on that. Um, I really like this one. It's a dual zone fridge. It has the fridge freezer combo. You can set this one to freezer, this one to fridge. So just slide it out and you can get in, get your freezer, fridge, anything you need in there. And um, yeah, I like that a lot. Now that's being powered currently by this Anchor. I believe this is the 800. I think it's actually a 777, but they round up. This is really great for pretty much all my needs, but I will be trying out some larger ones come this um, fall to just see if I can run some more stuff in here and just kind of test some stuff out and see what works. In here, um, I keep my inflation devices. This is a quick flate. I got this at Running for Tacos. This is basically a whole system where you can inflate four tires at the same time. Uh, you just plug this into your compressor and then these two run to all four of your tires and then it will make sure that all of your tires are set to the exact same pressure. I do have a video on this as well, but this works really cool with the onboard compressor because you can just have it in your engine bay. You can walk away, drink a beer, whatever, and, um, and it'll be done pretty quickly and you don't have to jump from tire to tire inflating everything. So this is just a, um, a little kennel here and it folds down pretty easy. You just pull it and pull it and it just collapses and it fits in here really nice like it's almost made for that little section and you can also unzip the top and have the your dog pop their little head out but um i don't know that this would be good for a dog over maybe 60 pounds or so i will link this below and you guys can check that out it fits perfectly back here in the back of the forerunner and it might fit in some other stuff too Okay, so I also do have an awning here that is attached to my GoFast. It is, I believe this was like $160. I don't think I would recommend this. I'll show you guys some B-roll of it, but it is um, not the best one. I will be switching. I was gonna switch to the Napa one, but uh, I can't really seem to get my hands on that. But it's an okay awning. It's just, it lets a lot of light in. And also the fact that they put these on the outside instead of the inside of it really doesn't make sense to me so while i do have an awning and people ask me about it sometimes i don't really recommend this i will put some links below to some stuff that i think is much better than the one i have and maybe even if you have the napa ones available where you live um, i would go with that because a lot of people highly recommend that one but um, i'll put some links below on some stuff that i would recommend because that's not one of them talking about stuff mounted to the go fast um, I have this Fisker's axe mounted up here now this is one of my favorite axes because not only is it only about 50 bucks it's very sharp it's very lightweight and and I think aesthetically it also just looks really good um, I have that mounted here with these quick fists you can run these on the GFC and they fit perfectly but you can also run them on whatever rooftop situation you have up there, rack, anything like that. They fit really nicely. I'll link basically both of these below. You can pick these up on Amazon. And if you have a GFC, another thing I have up front that I think is really cool is just this ram mount. And I have this up here so that I can put my uh, GoPro up there and run that while I'm driving and get some footage. I shot a whole video with just using this. Um, it's just basically a video I shot that was me driving over Independence Pass, but yeah, it holds on there really nicely and I'm not scared that it's going to ever come off there. I really like these because they are cheaper than my old Max tracks that I had and honestly they are a lot more flexible and they're 
just even lower profile. All around, I just think these are a really great product. Now, you can mount these in a lot of different ways. I just made my own mounting bracket because the GFC uh, mounting is kind of proprietary, so I went ahead and just kind of fabbed my own one, but I basically just cut a hole in some metal and mounted it up there. And right now that's just locked with a bike lock. All right, so I'll go ahead and show you guys what is probably the thing I get the most questions about is my GFC. So this is a really great tent for uh, two people. It just in the winter sometimes, it's a little bit tight because we sleep with bigger bags in the winter and it just takes up a little bit more, more room. So while I think this is fine for two people, in the winter, maybe it's just a little bit tight. And then just like that, you're ready to camp. So it's very fast. It's very lightweight and low profile. So I think it's a really great tent. A lot of people ask me about this one, but if you have any questions about it, I have a video on it and I will also be willing to answer any questions in the comments. Just let me know if you have any questions about this. Basically, this is the version one of the tent. There is now a version two and any complaints that I have had about this tent have been addressed in the version two. Like I said, this is fine for two people, but in the winter, it's just a little bit narrow. So there's a possibility that I might be changing this up in the future, but um, I might just look at seeing if I can do some modification or something like that. But I'm on the fence right now about whether I'm gonna keep this or not. I would still definitely recommend this. Just make sure that your height and everything is gonna fit with this. Take some measurements on your roof and make sure it's gonna fit. For the Forerunner, it actually has a proprietary system. Let me show you that down here. Okay, so um, this is the GoFast mounting uh, system that goes straight into the Forerunner. Um, this is really great because I didn't have to buy a roof rack when I bought this because this just bolts straight into the factory railing. So if I end up having to switch the go fast, then I will have to get a new roof rack. And that does sound like a lot of work, but um, I'll update you guys on what I'm gonna do as far as that, because that is kind of a lot of work. I'm sure there'll be some more stuff in the future. And like I said, I will be switching a lot of stuff up on here. And I just wanted to kind of close out this version of my Forerunner with a nice little uh, walk around of it so that I can answer some of your questions. I'm sure that a lot of you guys will still have questions, so let me know in the comments below and I will answer every single one of them to the best of my ability. And um, yeah, thanks for stopping by and checking this out, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.